We've both done this kind of a project like several times before each. Too many times. We've brought a boat into our lives and then life revolves around restoring, making the boat saleable, making it ocean worthy and Spending ready Spending lots of money on them and time. All your money, all your time. You started <laughs> before you even had a choice to do it, uh, growing up with your, your parents on board. I started when I moved out to university when I was like 18, started taking sailing lessons and I got myself started with a 20 foot vivacity, a little twin keel boat, which I could beach, put on the beach when the tide went down. I remember that was the first time I painted the bottom of my boat with new anti-fouling, did some topside work, kind of a bad paint job and some bad work inside the boat as well. But she sailed. The vivacity then grew into a 21-foot catamaran, which was absolutely a lot of fun, but quite cramped inside of the hulls. My way that we bought together uh, in Canada, we sailed down to San Francisco with her from Vancouver Island. We upgraded from Little My Way into a boat that Ravi could stand up in while cooking. 33 feet, Rosa. Post injury, surviving it. In 2019, our boat grew exponentially into the current sailboat, which is Inez or Inesperado, Inesperada. As the length of the boat grew, so did the pressure to get the boat off of the dock, because the price of everything not only goes up with the size, the length of the boat, but also probably you've also experienced in your own life the price of everything in general going up all going up the pressure was growing and we needed to get this boat off of the dock so we bought the boat from Isla Mujere and the engine was smoking and it was sounding weird the revs were all over the place we were going up and down and it was going ah, mm. in addition to rigging the entire boat we would need to be able to steer it what do you think about steering hydraulic steering cable steering tiller steering Luckily, you, the viewers watching, wanted to see this dream happen. We were sent tools, materials, money, help, advice. Job opportunities. Of course, behind the scenes, we had been doing boat deliveries, work on other boats. They were... There were disasters. There were pandemics. There were injuries. Uh, one boat almost took the end of my thumb off. This boat kind of cracked my skull open. <laughs> So yeah, pretty much between both boats, I think I pretty much lost a pound of flesh. Aboard Inez here, we started with the basics of living, 
we tried to repair the galley first. Uh, we started by, I guess, making our beds comfortable, getting new mattresses for the boat. The bathroom was, Im was improved. Then we moved to the rigging, hope trying to get the mo boat moving. Then we have to take apart the steering, try to rebuild that because the steering was not working. And we have to remove the engine to try and get another engine in, which also didn't work. <laughs> uh, on this boat, things seem to be breaking and, and falling apart faster than we could put it yeah, together. Yeah, Justin keeps saying things were, were kept breaking on us. The point is that everything was broken on the boat. We really wish that we could have rented a place while we were doing this work on the boat. So our advice would be not to do what we did. We couldn't really afford to do that. So for this process, the renovation zone was also our living area the whole time. Mexico has been a wonderful place for us to stay this whole time. It's been a wonderful country. Yeah, very welcoming. Have us. And for digital nomads, we were really lucky to be very welcomed here with the kind of visa we could get or temporary residency. We're very thankful for, for having been stuck here, <laughs> essentially in paradise. But the one thing about Mexico and sailboat work is it's one thing to to sail down here, uh, have some materials, maybe have to do a couple of projects to ameliorate your boat. But it was a whole other thing to essentially start from scratch. I highly recommend that you bring down your materials, like your paints, your epoxies, anything specialty, electronics. Marine. Anything yes. marine, uh, stainless, all, all that stuff should be brought. The things that are really easy to do, it's pretty easy to take out the boat out of the water, to do a bottom job, that kind of stuff is, is pretty much easy and accessible, but uh, that's pretty much uh, what it stays at. The rest becomes pretty complicated. Yeah, that was our experience. You've probably seen us make a couple of videos with budget in it. You'll see that we were living below a thousand US dollars a month uh, for most of the time, uh, even doing the boat projects. So that includes all the costs of, of having materials and having to do these boat projects on top of eating and accommodations at the dock. Even at this point, our boat is extremely basic. We don't have any of the luxuries. We don't have any of the uh, fancy things, but we think it's worth it. It's, it's worth trying to get this kind of way of living. It's been difficult, but we continue to pursue the dream of being able to have a moving, voyaging vessel. And even though we've worked so hard, we haven't attained a level of luxury or like we're so basic, many people would not want to live this way. But we're here. Well, it's not like we have no choice. <laughs> well, the choice would be, I, I've kind of said it before, we could have just abandoned the boat and, and go live in an apartment here for cheap. But something was obviously worth staying on the boat. And to me, that is, having something I own in the end and it's precarious it can you know god forbid it, it can go away very easily if you don't take care of it but to me it's worth it to have it as my own instead of again just flushing it down somebody else's toilet we have learned a lot over the years doing the projects on this boat and we hope that you the viewers have been able to glean a little bit of information along the way as well because living on a boat Traveling on boats is a non-stop learning process. We expect to keep on doing this into the future and we'd love to see you there.
sé que no tuvimos tiempo de podernos despedir sé que hubo otros caminos y tuviste que partir pero yo recuerdo siempre tu sonrisa y tu reír Me enseñaste que la vida No es difícil de vivir No es difícil de vivir No es difícil de vivir 